Namaskar. I have been told by the chairman that I have to be a little, uh, uh, I mean, uh, reducing the uh, talk to only 12 minutes. Uh, currently, I will try my best to wrap up and uh, I'm moving a little faster. The title, as you know, is the inclusion of uh, this inclusive innovation for inclusive growth. The government had been talking about inclusive growth, but government was never bothered to talk about the inclusive innovation. Meaning thereby, anyway, uh, what I propose, inclusive innovation, as it is already very clear, that we have to involve everyone. So the keywords which are going to be, or the concepts where the focus is going to be, one, inclusive innovation, what we understand. Then ICT as an enabling technology. Professor Pandey has already elaborated quite well. There have been two other uh, presentations by Avishek and uh, Ramaraju. They mentioned about the benefits of ICT and its pervasive nature. So it's enabling technology and it's a pervasive technology. Another important issue is, it is up to you. ICT is to augment the creativity, but it is you how to use it. Then next point is the education. All we talk about the accreditation and so on, whether it is NAC or NBA or ABET, they always focus on the quality, but there is no mention about the rele relevance. So what I strongly feel, we have to not talk of the assessment and accreditation in the context of quality and relevance. In fact, I interact very, I keep interacting. Well, my background, myself, um, because uh, I was uh, for a long time with the Ministry of uh, Communication and IT. I was also a uh, national coordinator for uh, uh, the program Technology Development for Indian Languages digital library and so on. And uh, on deportation, I have moved to IIT Kanpur uh, uh, to uh, uh, this Indian mission, Japan, as a consular for science and technology, also to Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, Gwalior as a director. And now I'm retired. So, so long as I had been in some job in the government or so, but today I'm a free man, so I can also put my views very freely and frankly. Professor Ramaraju was leaving. I requested him, why don't you listen to some uh, comments which may perhaps hit you as a government representative. So he had been very kind to uh, request, I mean to accede to my, accede to my request. So the next point is transcreation to keep up with the contemporary <coughs> innovation. We don't have any proper documentation of the innovation, so-called the grassroots innovation. We don't have any mechanism to really work from the point of converting this or proving this as a research. So here is a challenge to the scientist to take up the grassroots innovation and then try to take up this as a research problem. And then, see, it's a sort of reverse engineering. It's a nice opportunity. It's a unique opportunity. So I think uh, transcreation is also referring to another aspect that is so much work is going on in various fields uh, at this moment of time. But our common man in local languages doesn't have access to that. Only scientists sitting in the ivory tower can have access to it. So some mechanism has to be created to transcreate the research knowledge, innovation knowledge, which is of contemporary nature. So these were some of the ideas which I'm going to focus on. Now, innovation paradigm, if I consider some of the terms, creativity, innovation, invention, discovery, jugaad, entrepreneurship. 
Now, creativity involves new ideas, innovation where there is a successful implementation of creative ideas having impact on economy and society. So, both are very, very important. Then in invention is something contributing something out of box and discovery is something finding out something unknown. Jugar, in fact, I must give credit to Professor Anil Pandey. Last year he invited me for one of these seminars. So that time, uh, talking about uh, innovation-centric teaching learning process in education, I used this term. Later on, I came to know that there had been some papers subsequently in uh, HBR also using this term, Jawar. I thought we should not be shy of our own knowledge, because every time there is effort that we should be contemporary, we should have the international recognition which is possible only when we adopt the international terminology. In Hindustan, the most people on this planet are in the world, so it's only Hindustan. So we should be proud of this. We have large mass of people who have Jugaad. So Jugaad connotes the innovation in non-formal way that may be explained instantly, that may not be explained instantly in a structured manner. So we may call it as, this could be by untrained worker, we may call it as the intuitive or non-structured innovation. Entrepreneur, what he does, creates value to convert material into resources and thus creates new business or service. Inclusive innovation may include both structured innovation and jugaad, which is unstructured, intuitive. And this requires to change mindset and promote scientific temper of people at large, at school, at college level, and in various sectors of economy. So it is not something only in degree level programs we should talk of the uh, innovation research. We have to talk even at the lowest level. And in fact, if you take the sum total, uh, in fact, I borrowed this point from C.K. Prahlad, future lies at the bottom of pyramid. In my view, similarly, future innovations spring at the bottom of pyramid. And this is where we have to worry about co-creating knowledge. We have to work together. So you just see very large uh, uh, area which is covered by the uh, bottom. So we have to really see how all these three could co-create the knowledge. Information could be there. That means we know about innovation. But now we have to really justify in terms of a model and so on. There are two terms which normally we talk of the competitiveness and innovation. I feel whenever we talk of the innovation, innovation is not going to be any longer individual. It has to be in a collaborative manner because problems are going to be more and more complex. We are in the process of globalization also. So competitiveness is a slogan today for the success in business. But this, is to, this kind of slogan is more towards the IPR-centric competitiveness, and uh, which we have to see that needs to be discouraged. And that means we have to talk of open uh, technology-based competitiveness. So uh, finally, we need to we need to uh, cooperate for innovations and compete for achieving excellence to suit to local environment. So excellence is at the individual effort. Innovation is collaborative. And this point has to be uh, brought to notice. So now we talk about the methodology, how we look at the problem. Think globally and act locally. <clears throat> so what is transforming into network societies? you know, this distance is shrinking, concepts of global villages being propounded. In multicultural world, it is a challenge. It should not be felt that, yes, global village only through English society, English culture. So we have to also see how multicultural world in a global form, global village 
can be developed. Then technological culturalization in the, process, uh, in the process of localization ensures greater acceptance of a new technology. So whenever new technology comes, if we also associate the localization process, then acceptance is going to be better. And without technology acceptance, things are not going to move further in a sustainable manner. Future prosperity depends on the ability to innovate and on the capacity to adjust to change. Knowledge is essentially better ways to do things and has been main source of long-term economic growth all along. And in, me, in my view, development criteria could revolve around these three people, prosperity and peace. Now, Digital Divide, as Chairman, last, during the previous uh, half session, commented about the Digital Divide. I perceive Digital Divide differently. And then see how different nations perceive the Digital Divide and how developing nations perceive it. Why is it so? Developed nations feel, oh, they have a much larger market. That's why they go for talking about the Digital Divide. They can sell things and so on and so forth. The developing nations have fear of lagging behind in the economic race. The policy of developed nation is information exposure and thrust, on, thrust of Western culture. Whereas our focus is going to be on localization and preservation of local language and culture. The consumer behavior <coughs> in developed nation is substitute the old. They keep throwing off things, dumping. Whereas, in our case, upgrade the old. Um, 10, 15, 20 years old uh, car we would like to keep upgrading and so on and so forth. The technology, uh, the mode of technology, they force or focus or emphasize on IPR-centric technology. Whereas we always expect that it should be open technology. Two minutes more? That's all. My God. Okay, then I have to rush first. Uh, now why? Because low cost PC, they say uh, $500 is low cost, but it has to be less than $40. And the reason is because we had this purchasing power parity and uh, uh, GNP in a very drastic way. So our focus is going to be, their focus is on digital divide, access to information. <coughs> our focus is on unite and sharing the knowledge. And naturally, low affordability means low ICT penetration and larger digital divide. Anyway, government supported projects are there. This was a comment that there are lots of funded projects, but there is no ROI analysis. Technology absorption by societies are so minimal. So something has to be done on that. Service sector booms. But manufacturing sector dooms. Where is innovation? Innovation lies in the, um, in the manufacturing sector, not in the service sector so much. Language technologies, these were developed, <coughs> CDs were released, but their uses are negligible. Why? They did not make it open for even domestic business growth. And why there is a, I mean, government is um, worried about marketing for W3C membership and so on. So all these things are happening. So there is something we have to look into. Then consortium approach of R&D development discourages innovation in non-popular new research groups. Only few identified premier institutions are being funded R&D projects. Why not all? So something has to be also thought in this. Now even the seminars, including this seminar, which talks of the common man's issues and doesn't involve or doesn't invite the common man for open participation in seminars and conferences. We have to really look into this aspect also. Disconnect, there is a disconnect between vocational and academic stream. 11.5 uh, lakhs of students come out of the vocational stream and academic stream about uh, uh, say six lakhs or so, including the diploma holders, and there is a total disconnect. It's a waste of uh, human resource. So this uh, waste must be converted into asset. 
when this PPP model, public-private partnership model is also a misnomer, but we have to think of a different kind of model that is uh, uh, public cooperative uh, partnership model. Because the cooperative will have a much better... Uh, so just give me one minute to quickly wrap up. Uh, anyway, Silicon Valley, next one. Uh, research innovation. Here also I feel that there is a need. Research is needed to create new, tech, uh, new knowledge and then focusing on the critical success factors like quality, relevance, and sustainability. When are we talk of the new research? There are three pillars of uh, knowledge management because that becomes important. Now knowledge creation, one is the acquisition, assist, uh, assimilation by the people, by the society, and the development. So new knowledge is created. These three pillars are very, very important while interacting with the producer, the users, society, and business. This is uh, the Global Innovation Index uh, ranking. If you compare, uh, then ranking of uh, India is uh, 15. And uh, even the competitor like China is 13. But if you see the input for innovation, it is uh, 0.14. For, of course, uh, uh, 0 0.07 for China, whereas the output is much less, 0 0.02. And whereas for China it is 1.32. Of course, you compare with the South Korea and the US, Japan, it is uh, more than two. So we have to really look into where is the productivity, innovation productivity of our own people. So that shows that uh, some serious thought has to be done. And that is the reason we have to talk of the innovation output also, how to go about technological performance, business performance, and so on. How this can be done? If we integrate all these three uh, components, education innovation, technological innovation, and business com com uh, innovation, then only then we can expect the nation's economy and the sustainable development. To go to the last slide, whatever. Okay. Uh, closed, there are two types of innovations. Yeah, closed innovation, open innovation. Well, this is what I tried, uh, innovation radar, how to really measure innovation. So since time is not there, uh, I can skip there. There are basically four of these, uh, what, who, how, and where, and uh, how we can really measure them. So this is going to be Parameters are going to be set for different contexts like uh, innovation at the school level, college level, uh, at the R&D labs and so on and so forth, or uh, corporate labs. Then I talk about the innovation skills. Uh, these four, recall, relate, and in inference, and uh, uh, interface. These are the basic skills which are going to be important for developing. This is very, very important aspect where we see how much we really make use of the brain. In the modern uh, education concept, we use hardly 5% uh, of our brain uh, in a conventional education system, whereas the rest of it remains uh, more or less underutilized. So we have to really look for new ways for integrating knowledge and practice both so that the larger component of the brain can be used. And that's why I define IQ, which is in cognitive domain, knowledge, SQ, which is a skill quotient, and uh, the EQ, aptitude. Uh, uh, well, ICT, well. We will be putting this uh, presentation at the, uh, you know, we will be hosting it on the website, so you will get comments and feedback. Yeah, you. So, in fact, this is what I thought rational for a new breed of engineers which combines both uh, knowledge and practice. And uh, this kind of, in fact, I design the new curriculum, which is uh, the integrated uh, diploma and dual degree program, taking ITI students as well, because today IT doesn't have much of the scope to move further. So uh, literal entries and so on and so forth can get up to this, and uh, his benefits are going to be like this in terms of the salary and uh, status. So finally, the steps to augment innovation. My focus had been more on, this is the last slide, more on uh, 
uh, education. So curricular reforms are very much essential. We have to focus on innovation-centric teaching learning process, which are totally absent today. And faculty development aiming at academic leadership, that is also important. And innovation con uh, uh, conducive project-based learning is one of, one of the method methodology we have to talk about. Then innovation ignite industry networking with uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Innovation is case development, adopting it. This is uh, something which I felt very strongly. We, uh, and the, every institution should be able to adopt a village and compare the annual performance, how the contribution had been there. Then setting up uh, something like uh, CSI or IT lead chapter, that is a leadership, entrepreneurship, and professional uh, development chapter. And so finally, this is left to you. Uh, tomorrow's innovators, I think, all of us plus those who come in contact, the new generation people, they are going to be the innovators. And with this, thank you very much.